This door is tightly locked. The door is locked. No, this hat frame will not work. It is not of the proper type. Quite interesting. Regardez, mademoiselle. This is the wrong kind of hat frame. Think, mademoiselle Masso. It must be made of the wire mesh. That will do nicely. It's locked fast. I don't need anything else from my suitcase at the moment. The hat frame must be of wire mesh, a type now out of fashion. No, this one will not suffice. I'll put this into my scrapbook so I can take a closer look at it later. It's locked fast. This door is tightly locked. That will do nicely. This looks like a puzzle box. Let me see if I can get it open. That isn't right. I can feel the risk. I don't think... I tried, but it doesn't seem to want to move in that... And now to see what was so cleverly guarded. I'll return this after I've discerned if it has any bearing on the case at hand. I've already searched. I won't find This door is tightly locked. Ah, a single pipe smoker aboard and all roads lead to him. I won't find Regardez, mademoiselle. I have everything I need to read the paper. That is most pleasing. I have all the pieces. All that remains is for me to assemble them properly.
The curling tongs have the burnt paper firmly but delicately in their grip. The paper holder is now in place. Now on to securing a heat source. Daisy Armstrong, c'est ça. I now know the real name of the dead man. And I know why he had to leave America. Monsieur Poirot, I have documented that case in my scrapbook. I remember where the case. Ten years ago, Colonel Armstrong was an Englishman. He married the daughter of Linda Arden, the most famous tragic American actress of her day. They lived in the city of New York and had one child, three years old, whom they adored. Two men snatched Daisy from the arms of her nursemaid. The police were convinced that the young woman had some knowledge of the crime and questioned her relentlessly. The enormous ransom was paid, but two weeks passed with no word from the kidnappers. And then there was a break in the case. Two brothers named Perkinson were identified by witnesses and tracked to a farmhouse somewhere outside of the city. The Perkinsons were arrested at the farmhouse where they and a woman not identified had been hiding. They were tried and convicted. At their trial, they implicated Cassetti, not only as the mastermind of the scheme, but the man who shot the little girl. The tearful testimony of the Perkinson brothers surprised many, but they admitted their guilt. And in America, the crime carries the maximum penalty. During the sentencing, the Perkinson brothers tried to make the escape. Jeffrey was captured, but not his brother Robert. And Cassetti had vanished without a trace. Madame Armstrong gave birth to a dead child born prematurely, and she herself died. The evening after the double funeral, a broken-hearted Colonel Armstrong returned to the family brownstone on Park Avenue, locked himself in his study, and shot himself. A body was discovered in the New York Harbor shortly after Jeffrey Perkinson died in the electric chair. It was identified by a relative as Robert Perkinson. If he was a suicide or killed by Cassetti, hmm, was never known. Cassetti was still at large, seen now here, now over there, and still more tragedy was to follow. The police refused to believe the hysterical denials of the poor girl, hoping she might lead them to Cassetti. In a fit of despair, the poor girl threw herself from a window and was killed. It was proved afterwards that she was absolutely innocent of any complicity in the crime. Cassetti was the man, there can be no doubt. He had used the same methods in the past, hired men down on their luck to do the dangerous work, but taking most of the ransom for himself, and always killing the victim if the police were closing in. He had many enemies, that one. I cannot regret that he is dead. I agree with you, mademoiselle. Still, it is not necessary that he should be killed aboard one of our trains. There are other places. Indeed. The investigation continues. And we progress, no? And now is the time for the assembling of the evidence. Collect all passports, gather information about our suspects, seek out any clues, follow every possible trail. Goodness, it seems to have gotten extremely cold in here. Mademoiselle, the engineer has just informed me. A rock from the avalanche, it struck the undercarriage of the coal tender. The pipe that carries the steam that heats the train is damaged. It must be repaired, or we will all freeze to death. Could this be coincidence? Either way, I'd better look into it immediately.
Mateo, did you see Mr. Hardman come this way just now? No, señorita. Señorita, unless we find a way to replace that broken pipe, our chances look very bad. There's no power. I'll need to come up with a way to provide it with electricity. Someone has seen to it that the snowshoes, they are beyond repair, and now quite useless. Quite interesting. I'm sure I can piece these back together. There, it is complete. I will carefully place it into my scrapbook for further study. It's locked fast. Klaus's passport. I'll put it with the others. Quite interesting. Quite interesting.
This must be where the steam is escaping. It's quite hot, even from a distance. Please, you must help me. My stomach. Do you need a doctor? No, I need food. I am wasting away. I'm sure if you went to the restaurant car, the chef would fix you something. You do not understand. Klaus, the chef de cuisine, is a master. His meat, his sauces, but even the tenderest meat must be chewed. Yes, that is true. I am a busy man. I work hard. I have little time for frivolities. Frivolities? It is. You will pardon me. I had not brushed my teeth since before the Great War. The dentists in Istanbul are fiends. This one, he does not cure me, no. He yanks my teeth out. But the new teeth he has made do not fit properly. Adjustments are needed. He sends them to Trieste. But the train will pass through Trieste in only two days. I can survive for two days on soup. Now we may be stranded here for a week or more. Remember 1929? It has happened. It can happen again. Monsieur needs... Meat. And to chew it? Beef. Once I have eaten, I will be in your debt forever. Ask anything of me. Monsieur, today is your lucky day. I have teeth for you. I have little to offer you in return. I know nothing of the murder, but thank you so much. Monsieur, I have desperate need of your hammer. I would do anything for you, mademoiselle, after the service you have done for me. But I need that hammer to check the boiler pressure. If you can find me an adequate replacement, then it is yours. I have something I think will be adequate to replace your magnificent hammer. What a wonderful object. This will do nicely. Please take the hammer with my compliments. Please, help yourself, dear young lady. Anything you want, help yourself. I would like a key to the baggage car. Please, take one of mine. Why do you have more than one key to the baggage car? I often assist with the loading and unloading at the smaller stations. Sometimes I must loan a key to the handlers. Please give me the key to the Athens Paris coach. Here is mine. Keep it as long as you like. That will be all, Pierre. The door to the baggage car is locked. You presume... The key fit perfectly. These items do not belong to any of the passengers. I will not compromise the train company's reputation by disturbing them without a good reason. These goods are being shipped. They do not belong to anyone currently on the train. It looks like these contain vegetables, which comes as a bit of a surprise considering Klaus's penchant for flesh. These goods are being shipped. They do not belong to anyone currently on the train. Quite interesting. Mademoiselle, observe. 
The lid, it is secured with four nails. The nails were loose. Peculiar. Well, what do we have here? I'd better put the lid back on for appearances. Nothing a little elbow grease can't undo. It's the cargo manifest. It shows that three casks were loaded in Belgrade. One of olive oil, one of honey, and one of vinegar. It also mentions a special security package that was loaded in Istanbul. A keg of white wine vinegar. Salonika olive oil, a keg of Greece's finest. I've heard of this honey. It's reported to be quite good. It looks terrible out there. This seems to be a security door. It certainly lives up to its name. It's locked. It is locked. The key... Remember, Mademoiselle? The gunshot seems to have frightened him off. I'm not sure what I expect to find wandering around out here. This looks like a... T so many paths, it would be easy for me to get lost out here. Remember, mademoiselle, you are the intruder here, not the wolf. It is senseless to harm the creature. The gunshot seems to have frightened him off. The student? A hut out here in the middle of nowhere. A shepherd's hut. Probably only used when the snow it is gone and he brings his sheep up to the high pasture. This door... One of the bars appears to be quite loose. Would you not say so, mademoiselle? <laughs> 